I'm Tom Romito from the Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society. It's my privilege to be sitting with Jerry Tiniano, my friend, and we are visiting in Colorado. Jerry, we go back a long ways. Uh, please tell me a little bit about yourself and what your affiliation is right now. Well, first, Tom, welcome to Colorado. It's great to have you here. Um, and uh, I'm uh, uh, almost lifelong Ohioan. Uh, four years ago, my wife and I moved to Denver so that I could become the city's first chief sustainability officer. Uh, but before that, uh, my entire life and career was in Ohio, uh, except for seven years when I was away at college and law school. Uh, first half in Cleveland, the second half in Columbus. Uh, I've been a private attorney. Uh, I've been the state director for uh, the National Audubon Society in Ohio. Uh, and the director of the Mid-Ohio Regional Planning Commission, which was based in Columbus. Jerry, what are you passionate about? I am passionate right now about the times we live in because I've been working on sustainability and issues related to it uh, for my entire life. And in that entire adulthood of 40-plus years, there's been no time like the present. We have opportunities right now uh, to make progress on issues, uh, you know, things that we've dreamed about for decades. Uh, and so uh, I kind of regret that it's so near the end of my career when we have these opportunities, but we have these opportunities and uh, uh, things, opportunities that are growing by leaps and bounds uh, every year. So this is a really exciting time to be working in this area. Well, tell me, Jerry, what do you think people should know, think, feel, and do about in terms of green solutions? Well, the first thing, at least in the, the approach we use here in Denver, is we, tr we try not to argue with people. We try not to convince them um, of the science or the merits of, uh, of, of, of our policy positions. We really try to focus on their own personal choices and why they would do it for their own benefit. So uh, we use a little mantra here in Denver when people say, well, how can we get involved in sustainability? We say there's three things you can do. One is save money and one is to spend it here, and one is to do it together. And really, that is sustainability in a nutshell. Um, most of the things we ask people to do, whether it's saving energy, conserving water, uh, you know, that saves them money. So we can sell it a little better that way. And then we don't want it to all be savings and sacrifice, so we say spend it, but spend it here. You know, keep it local. And then, most importantly, do it together. Um, in other words, do it as a community because really the ultimate renewable resource is the community. The community, it is a renewable resource. You have to concentrate and make an effort to renew community values, but it's also the basis of all other renewable resources. So that's kind of our formula. Jerry, in, in your role as Director of Sustainability for the Mayor of Denver, what, are, what is your major role? We are actually an office of three people in a combined city and go county government of 11,000. So we cannot do projects ourselves. We teach sustainability theory and practice to the agencies. Uh, the mayor gave me a four-word agenda when I started, which was scale and everybody plays. And by scale, he means he wants programs that make a difference, produce big numbers, big changes. He's not interested in little pilot projects. He wants to move big numbers. And everybody plays is that he wants sustainability to be the basic business value of everything that every department does, no matter what service that it performs. Our role is to take sustainability as a business value and instill it in the agencies by working hand in hand with them, not on our projects, not on projects that we design, but on projects that they design, because that way they own it. They, they own the result, and it's more likely to get done. Jerry, I mentioned earlier that we go back a long way. And I'd like our viewing audience to know that you inspired me to launch the Rocky River Important Bird Area in 2003 when as Executive Director of Audubon Ohio, you, you came to my first board meeting as the President of Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society. In your home, as I recall. That's yeah, that's and right. And I, I mentioned that we needed a conservation project and you suggested that we monitor the Rocky River Important Bird Area, yeah. and that launched us on our five-year adventure of doing exactly that. But subsequently, you uh, invited me to be on the Audubon, Ohio Board of Directors, of which you were the, 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 um, the, the 
advisor as a, uh, executive director of Audubon Ohio, and you became one of the biggest supporters of Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society, as well as the other chapters in Ohio. Could you please uh, tell us a human interest story from for those days? Well, you know, what it, the reason I think I was such a, a big supporter of your chapter, um, because you did things. I mean, everyone goes out and watches birds, and citizen science is very powerful. Um, people ask me these days, there's a lot of talk about smart cities. What's a smart city? And everyone thinks a smart city is where there's a lot of computer programs and, you know, applications. But to me, a smart city is a city where most of the adults understand the basics of science and math, because that's the key to really selling them on projects. You folks were already doing that, but you went beyond it by organizing this conservation campaign. So you weren't just studying, you were acting, uh, and you were putting together um, the, the specifics of uh, how you would get the community engaged and how it would lead to specific actions uh, in that important bird area. Uh, and frankly, on a, on a side of town, you know, I grew up on the east side, I'm actually wearing my Shaker class of 73 uh, headgear here, but um, you know, the west side was never known for that. Uh, and yet, the natural values on the west side were always every bit as good, if not better, than those on the east side. What you folks were doing was making that come alive and having people actually you know, get their fingers dirty um, and, and, and go beyond just holding the, the binoculars to planning and working and bringing people together. Jerry, what do you feel about the future in terms of, of planet Earth? You know, we're, we're really at a tipping point right now. There's two things that are happening. Number one, uh, the threats have never been greater um, because our population has never been greater and our supply of non-renewable resources is also at its low point. That's a tough combination. Highest human population ever, lowest storehouse of unrenewable resources. But at the same time, we are seeing this um, kind of collision of a lot of different trends. The technology is growing. Uh, really qu quickly. Uh, I was just at a presentation earlier this week with Amory Lovins, uh, the great um, uh, founder of the Rocky Mountain Institute, and Amory said uh, the low-hanging fruit is growing faster than we can harvest it. So we have these technological innovations, but we also have changes in demographics and personal preferences, particularly with the younger generation. Um, I actually currently see the, the older generation moving away from cars, moving away from suburban sprawl, moving back into walkable neighborhoods, and the same thing with the younger generation. You know, it used to be when you and I were growing up and we turned 16, we might have asked our parents for a car. You know, now when kids turn 16, they ask for an Uber account. And they're not interested in the car. They might want a, an upscale bike, but not the car. So the convergence of these changing technologies and the changing demographics uh, and the changing preferences among different age groups, to me, spells greater opportunity than we've had at any time in my lifetime. Well, folks, there you have it, the hope for the future, thanks to leaders like Jerry Tiniano. Thanks for watching.